one. Questions? Are right, anybody got any questions? So it's a, uh, kind of a COVID day for you today. Isn't for us, for the last few weeks, yeah, it is kind of a, it was a blowout. For, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was hoping there at the end it got a little hairy scary, but, uh, you know, there, there's, uh, we got we got a lot of guys that haven't played a whole lot this season who made big plays for us during a game and guys who played 50 snaps and normally, you know, might not play or play 10 snaps. So that's, that's big for us. Those guys were able to come through and you never know when your number is going to be called. Seems like a pretty complete game. Defense played well. Defense, I thought, played really well. You know, you hold somebody eight points, you're doing an excellent job. And, you know, Coach Wood and, and his defensive staff really prepare the guys. You know, this morning we do a walkthrough out in the parking lot and offense was on one side of the parking lot and defense on the other. And, you know, boy, they're just dialed in and, and doing an excellent job, you know, with their final preparation before the game begins. I uh, thought we tackled well for the most part, part defensively. Uh, someone told me we had five sacks, which is good. We had a good pass rush. We, we knew we were going to have to do that. That was going to be a big part of the game. Um, offensively, different guys kind of made big plays for us. Chris Brazel kind of dominated a drive uh, for a touchdown. And Chris Carter had two touchdown catches. And they were huge for us. I thought Michael was really accurate. Uh, you know, he didn't practice three days this week. He was already, you know, so we were working up until this morning. He was going to play, but he's a tough joker, man. And he, he gets out there and he plays, you know. So uh, we were down some receivers and, you know, a few offensive linemen and, and uh, guys that were backing him up just stepped in and played played really well. What was the you? You know, he got hit and kind of sprained his knee a little bit. He was having a hard time running around. Uh, but he's all right, obviously. <laughs> you, you, uh, you, how do you look ahead at this, you know, this game you got coming up? You know, I, we've had a lot of crossover games where I've got to watch, uh, you know, UTSA. They played Florida Atlantic. They played uh, ECU. They played uh, almost everybody that we played the last few weeks. They played at some point in time. So, you know, UAB, I, I got to watch them there. So there, there's a, uh, they got a good ball club. You know, Jeff Trailer, their head coach, has done an excellent job over there and, and uh, you know, very talented. They've got a very experienced quarterback. I believe it's their seventh year guy. Is that correct? I guess that, right? that might be right. Is that right? Yeah. yeah, you know the stats. I, that, that's a long time playing. <laughs> so uh, uh, they're, they're, they're really talented and, you know, we'll we'll uh, we've done some advanced scouting on them, you know, but uh, we'll really dig into it on the plane ride home and then tomorrow. What's your level of optimism with two wide receivers? I don't know. We'll, we'll see. You know, he's, you know, I'm, I'm obviously not a doctor, so I, you know, they'll tell us if they can go or not. I, I don't know. They're, you know, they're, they're both, uh, but both of them were here today. Lawrence Keys and Quan Jackson, and they're really into it. You know, and that's. Uh, that's, uh, I think, in, indicative of the kind of young men we have here that even when they're injured, they're pulling for their teammates. And sometimes you don't get that. Guys get hurt and they pile like a baby. Those two guys are, you know, real men. The press. It's good to go. It looked good to me. Well, sir, what could you tell me about the leadership of Michael Pratt and how he goes about his business? Well, he just, he's a really a servant leader. You know, his, his parents, you know, he was raised in a family, they were missionaries. And, uh, you know, he's just always giving back, and he was that way before he was homeschooled because they're traveling around so much. I think until he got into high school, maybe. And uh, so, just a, a really neat family and a really good young man. I, you know, he's an excellent student. I think he's a three five or something like that. And you know, he just you know takes care of his business. You tell him to do something once he does it. You know, so he's a good good guy to have as your quarterback. It also flows through the rest of the team. I noticed that today you guys were pretty much a well-oiled machine from start to finish, just like off the top of my head. You guys let the game come to you. You guys didn't force anything. Is that a testament to Michael, testament to the entire team? What would you consider that? Testament? Well, it's, it's how we do it. You know, we talk, we have what we call a plan to win. And the first uh, component of the plan to win is, uh, Win the turnover takeaway margin. I've been coaching a long time. We've been plus one or better turnover takeaway. We've won 91% of our games, a whole lot of different levels, you know, but it takes the players to buy into it. You know, I don't know if you notice how we 
you know, have the ball high and tight, claw the ball, ball put on the body, lock the elbow, wrist and the elbow all the time, chin it, tip the ball underneath the chin. And if your quarterback doesn't do that, you got problems, you know, and and uh because he's the leader of the team and he's he's involved with the ball every single play, you know. So he does an excellent job of reinforcing that, you know, uh uh you know, uh, philosophy for our team. You guys have had have a season. Obviously, a great season. You guys are the only group of five team right now to be ranked in the college football top 25. So what do we say about how this whole season has gone to Well, they've done, they've done a great job of fighting through adversity. So, you know, that's, uh, you know, we, we, we guys getting banged up and, uh, you know, and we, we haven't played well the whole time. We're kind of finding a little different way to win with control of the clock and doing some things like that. But, uh, uh, you know, they're just, you know, every week they buy into what we're selling. And and if it, the players do that, you got an opportunity to be successful. And then my last question for you is, what could you tell me about FAU as a team? What you see? Well, I thought they battled the whole game. You know, I, I got a lot of respect for Tom Herman. Um, my college coach, a guy named Ron Randall, and he comes to every one of our home games. He'll be there this week. He's also the head coach at Sam Houston State and Tom coach for him for, I think, six years. You know, so we, we kind of, you know, come from the same family. And I think he's, uh, you know, he's doing a really nice job of building the program here at FAU. That's awesome. Thank you so much. You betcha. Anybody got anything? Yes, I do. Willie, so first of all, with Michael Pratt missing that practice time, how much how much does his experience help? Because he came out and was as sharp as he's ever been right off the bat, despite it, it, missing. It really helps out a bunch. You know, I, I, I tried to get him not to practice at all. He tried to come out there and, and uh, you know, I told him you're going to be fine. You know, you, you've been there, done that. There's nothing they can throw at you. You haven't seen a hundred times. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so he, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think he, he would not have been able to play this week if he didn't have all the experience that he's got. Yeah, and, and then also last week, the receiver injuries, injuries hit you during the game and you hadn't planned for it. How much did it help this week that you kind of knew what your situation well, was? Getting? You know, that's a good question, Gary. It's good, you know, when you know ahead of time who's going to play and who isn't. The only guy that we thought might have a chance to play and we were waiting for the warm-ups to see was Neil Keith Brown. And he felt pretty good. I think he'll be full speed this week. And they had a huge catch for us. Yeah. Um, and – it looked Memphis um, SMU did win today, so you're in the exact same situation you were last year. It looks like you 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 win on Friday, you're the host, and if you don't, you're out. You have experience in that last year, but just it, it, how good do you feel about your positioning right now going into the, the final game? I'm sorry, what would you say? Uh, just you, with Mem with SMU winning, basically, if you beat UTSA, you're probably you're going to host the conference championship game, and if you lose, you're not going to be in the conference championship game, which is the exact same situation you were in when you went to Cincinnati last year. Just how 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 comfortable do you feel in that spot now? Well, you know, you just got to do it. It's, it's uh, I don't know if that helps you any that you've had it, you're in the same spot last year or not. You know, you know, we we've always talked about one and zero, just you know, doing the mm -hmm. very best you can every single day. And, Carry it over to the next day, the next, day, the next day, and the next day, and then we do with games. And, you know, we're gonna have to prepare for a really good UTSA team, and you know, I I won't talk about. It. I'm sure the kids understand it. You know, you, you win this game, you know, Friday, you're, you know, you're gonna play another one, you know, and you get played at home. You know, so uh, we just want to go one and zero this week. And, and UTSA, I think they had a 19 play drive in in, in the second quarter, and it got no points, How not UTSA, um, um, FAU. How big was that in, in, in the game? Jarius Monroe made a really good tackle on one of the plays, and then and they yeah, came you know, over. I'm the really proud of Jarius. He, he has become a very efficient tackler. And uh, that was, you're right, that was a big tackle by mm -hmm. him. And then uh, a nice job on the, uh, you know, I, I think it was fourth and four. And, uh, uh, you know, good tight coverage and keeping him in the pocket, making him throw on rhythm and, and uh, you know, then we got out of there with the offense. You know, we had to, you know, start with, at the four yard line. So yeah, that was a, that was a big play by him. He I'm had good. Two nice to have this today. You good? I'm good. Thank you. You got one? Yeah. So you you were talking about obviously the game uh, for next week. How much does like being battle tested? Like how much uh, credence or value do you put in being battle tested 
going into a game like that? Well, you know, as a head coach, you got to be careful about how much you're practicing, you know, and, and uh, you know, and I didn't know, understand that years ago, you know, I liked, I thought more was better and I was working on tackling all the time and, you know, and inside drills and team drills. So we got cut back quite a bit because, no, you know, number one, it's, you know, it's your 12th game of the season, but number two, it's a shorter week. So, uh, and, and we're banged up. So, we, but we, but we got to get the work done, you know, that we need to in order to, you know, prepare for UTSA because it's a different opponent and we can't just line up and do the same stuff. They're, they've got great coaches over there too. So, you know, we got to de develop a really nice game plan over the next, you know, three, four days. For all that Michael has accomplished um, for this program, with this program, uh, maybe how ironic is it or how cool is it that he became the all-time passing leader uh, back home? Yeah, I think he had 300, 400 people here at the game watching him. He knows about every third person down this neck of the woods. I, you know, he's the greatest quarterback in two-lane history. It really is. I mean, and we've had great quarterbacks here. I'm not trying to diminish that, but when you put into his statistics plus – the wins that he's gotten. I mean, he's, he's done a tremendous job. He really has. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's just, uh, you know, we, we, we've been blessed to have him. Everybody good? Thank you all. We're good, Chris. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up with Chris Carter. We're in a late here. Yeah. All right. Got it. Let's sit down. Chris Carter.